let's talk a little bit about how much should you stress? Because I would never say, I didn't forget to call you, right? That's too much stress. We tend to stress one word in a phrase, like a prepositional phrase. So here, and it tends to be typically towards the end of a phrase. So this might be among the nations, right? Or of your blessing, or in your decisions. It may not be in your decisions or in your decisions unless you're trying to make a certain point, but typically it's the end of a phrase, a prepositional phrase. Let me give you an ex another example. When you have words together, and I know this shows up a lot in a lot of, in a lot of the readings, especially in the, uh, the Eucharistic prayers and the gospel, very often there are two words connected with and. Typically, and if you're a native speaker, you may do this naturally. But how would you say this first one? Does somebody want to try that? Go ahead. Okay, so what part, now that your name is? Christina, Christina sorry. What did Christina stress? Try it again. What, is, what do you hear her stress? Sisters, and maybe brothers, maybe brothers and sisters. Typically, we stress, when we have a phrase like that, we stress the last part, brothers and sisters, right? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Without realizing it, we do stress that a little bit more. So when you come up with passages connected with and, and you tend to stress the last. What's the colors of the American flag? Red, white, and blue. We tend to stress the last word. So that's a pattern that we use Nobody taught it to us, but for some reason, the more dynamic speakers use that, and the monotone speakers did seem to miss out on that pattern. Okay. Oh, it's the, that's the natural pattern to do. That's good. Oh, great question, Katie. Right, it's brothers and sisters, right? Um, boys and girls. We, that's just the rhythm. Instead of boys and girls, it doesn't sound right, right? Or boys and girls. If I say boys and girls, it almost sounds like I'm saying boys and berries. It, 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 you hear it, we hear it differently. So when we have two words we tend to stress, when they're connected with and, we tend to stress the last part. So we have brothers and sisters, boys and girls, body and blood. How often does that come up? Saturday and Sunday, when you're talking about meetings or events. So it's always going to be that last part. Okay, so this the best way to practice stress is to do something as simple as a nursery rhyme. So those of you who have children or grandchildren or you just feel like reading nursery rhymes, think about the melody and the stress because it's more exaggerated. Now, we don't want to overdo it, but what would we stress? If you look at this first line, what might you stress there? Anybody want to read the first line? Connie? Okay, so what did you stress there? Okay, so you changed, you're changing my whole plan here. But <laughs> so Jack and Jill went up the hill. Okay, is that how you typically read that nursery rhyme though? Jack and Jill, like so it's Jack and Jill went up the hill. And so Bill, what would you say for the next line? Since it rhymes with your name. What, how, to fetch a pail of water, okay? And then what's the next line? Jack fell down and broke his crown. Okay, so what is he stressing with Jack? Stress down and crown. Okay, but you, that's what you wanted to stress, but I don't think, I think you could exaggerate it a little bit more. Jack fell down and broke his crown. Right, and then the last part? And Jill came tumbling after. Okay, and Jill, and so what are you stressing here? Okay, and Jill. And actually, it's pretty rhythmical, so we might say, and Jill came tumbling after, especially if you're reading it to a child. So that's just an example. I, I don't actually didn't even put Jill there, but and Jill came tumbling after. So that's the rhythm that we might use. Now, that's exaggerated. That's not necessarily readings. 